Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and welcome to part 23 of our series on making a custom character controller in Unity. Today we're going to be adding some steering controls to our vehicle so that we can actually maneuver around our scene rather than having to uh, go in and manually rotate the vehicle. So let's jump right into our vehicle controller script in MonoDevelop. And the first thing we're going to do here, I'm actually going to break up all of these variables here a little bit so we have some organization. This first set here is really our vehicle stats, so we'll add a comment there. I'm going to break off this forward velocity because what this is, is um, kind of the current vehicle state. In addition, I guess we can break these out too and we'll just say these are stats calculated at runtime. And we're going to add another stat as well as another vehicle state here. First thing we're going to add is a public float called turn angle per second. And this um, this is really what you know how far the vehicle will turn if we're holding down the left or right keys for a full second. And I'm going to make this just be 90 degrees right now. We can obviously adjust this depending on the feel we want, but that will kind of give us enough of a, a fast enough turn, I think, that we'll be able to make sure it's working properly. Secondly, in our vehicle states, we're going to add another float, and I'm going to call this current turn. And that's really going to be responsible for each frame in the same way that our forward velocity tells our vehicle if it should be moving forward. This will tell it if it should rotate at all. I'm also going to add in our start function, just make sure to zero out that current turn as well, just in case there is something that has affected it somehow. Now, in our read input, uh, we right now we just have our accelerator and our brake that we're checking. I'm going to add in to check for this um, whether or not our, either of our horizontal axes buttons are being pressed. We can quickly jump back over to Unity, go to our input manager, double check that we have the first, our axis 0 is W and S, which is up and down, so it's the axis 1 that we want with the D and A keys. So here we're going to say if, in read input, we'll say if data.axes1 does not equal 0, so we know that one of those two keys is being pressed. And if both keys are, happen to be being pressed, we're just zeroing out the steering. Then we can set our current turn equal to our turn angle per second times time dot delta time. And we're also going to multiply this by a quick uh, conditional check because while this is like a positive turn, there's also the possibility that it's a negative turn if you know we're if we're turning to the left instead of the right. So what we're going to do here is we're going to just quickly add on to this data dot axes one. Check if that's greater than zero. If it's greater than zero, we know we want it to be positive, and it can just be one. Otherwise, we'll make it negative one. If you're not familiar with conditional checks like this, I know I've um, done a few of them in the past. We can even just we'll hold this all here in a set of parentheses. They're not strictly necessary, but it keeps our data, uh, our code a little bit more contained. Um, but basically we're just asking here, is this a positive value? If so, positive one. If it's a negative value, then make it negative one. We know at this point this is not going to be zero because otherwise we wouldn't be in the if check. So we know for sure it's either positive or negative and that will give us that pro appropriate um, signage on the turn. So with that in there, we can actually jump down to our late update function. And this is where we're actually going to tell our vehicle to turn. We're just going to put this right at the start of our um, late update function right now. And we're going to say if forward velocity is greater than zero. And the reason for this is that if you've ever been sitting in a car, you know that if you, you can turn the steering wheel all you want and it's not going to actually physically turn. Um, if we're in like a tank or something that had, you know, say like reversible treads on both sides that you could actually turn in place, we wouldn't necessarily put this in and we could put a boolean check if we want that kind of style of control. But for right now we're just going to say if we're completely stopped, don't actually turn. 
So if forward velocity is greater than zero, and why is that? Oh, because I did not write out forward velocity. There we go. Then we're going to set our rigid body's rotation equal to quaternion dot Euler. Euler, I believe. Yeah, it's Euler. Euler angles. And then that's going to be basically what we're doing here is the rotation is a quaternion, but quaternions are a pain in the butt to work in, so we're going to con basically work in Euler angles and then just convert it to a quatern quaternion at the very end. And so we're going to take our same that same rotation, convert that to an Euler angle. We're going to add a new vector 3, which is going to be 0 on the x. It's going to be our current turn on the y and 0 on the z. And then we'll add those two. So basically, we're taking our current rotation adding this vector 2 of our current turn on the y-axis and then converting that to a quaternion to set to our rotation. Now lastly at the very end down here I'm going to want to make sure that current turn is set back equal to 0 otherwise we'll just continue turning and our turns will just keep on adding up one on top of another until we're spinning like a top and we don't want that. So make sure at the end of your late update you reset your turn back to zero so that if you pull your finger off the key next frame you're not continuing to turn. And with all that we can actually see this in action now. Let's jump back over to Unity. We should see in our vehicle controller that our turn angle appears there. It's 90 degrees like we set it. We'll hit play we see right now I'm, I am pressing the A and D keys, nothing is happening. But then if I start to accelerate a little bit and start to turn, we see that it works perfectly. I'm turning left and right. Now I'm also kind I'm holding on to one or more of these keys because I want to show a little bit of an issue that we have right now, which is that I'm no longer pressing the acceleration key, yet I'm still continuing to move as I press these steering keys. I'm not ever actually rolling to a stop. I'm not decelerating at all. It's only when I completely let go that I finally decelerate. And this is kind of an exploit right now, a bug in the system. This is something that if, say, you had like a fuel that if you're pressing the accelerator, your fuel goes down, you could kind of use this as a way to avoid spending fuel. Just make sure you're turning and, you know, you can get more out of your vehicle. Not what we want. And the reason for this is that right now, how we're checking if we should decelerate our vehicle is if there's no new input. And unfortunately, new input doesn't really differentiate between are you pressing the steering keys, are you pressing the acceleration, are you pressing both? Doesn't really say, so it doesn't know that it should be decelerating because there is some kind of new input coming in. So we need to add in some way to track whether or not specifically acceleration is coming in. So we're going to go back up here again. And we're going to add to our current vehicle states. We're going to add one more. It's going to be a Boolean. We're going to call this Excel change. And what this is saying is that we are somehow actively changing our acceleration right now. Now back down in our late update, we can keep our turn um, information here. Then we're going to add a new check up here. We're going to say if not new input or not Excel change, meaning if there is no input whatsoever, meaning we know, therefore we know that the uh, acceleration button isn't being hit because nothing is being hit, or there is specifically no Excel change, so we do have some buttons being hit, but they're not ones that affect our acceleration. If both of those are true, then we want to decelerate. We'll cut this, paste it in here. And then finally, we can actually just, every single frame, regardless, we can apply this um, transform, or this uh, velocity rather. We can delete all of that other here. Sorry, I'll go back. All of this old code that we had here, the if new input, else, all of this we can delete. So really what we're doing here is if moving forward, turn vehicle, and then if no acceleration input, um, decelerate, and then finally 
move vehicle based on current velocity. Finally, down here, um, we're going to you know, kind of reset everything, reset for next frame. And the last thing we can do down here is in the same way that we want to make sure that our current turn and our new inputs are reset, we'll also reset that Excel change. And we'll change that back to false at the end of every frame. The last thing we need to do here, though, is make sure that there is a way for Excel change to be noted when we enter our late update. Because right now, we've not, we're never actually making it true. Even though we're you know, pressing the accelerate buttons here, we're not actually setting it to true. I'm actually going to do that in our accelerate method, because that way we know no matter what that that's going to be um, set. So right down here, I'm going to say Excel change equals true. The more we think about it, we may not even need this new input here, because um, if there is no new input, then Excel change will be false. So, in fact, we should be able to just delete that altogether. So, as long as there's no acceleration change, um, we know to decelerate. Let's do that there. Jump back over to Unity. And now we can play once more. And now we should see that we can start accelerating and then we turn, but we do slowly decelerate to a stop. And right now that stop is kind of hard and we kind of stop turning at the same time. Those are things that we could adjust as we go. But for right now, we do officially have our system where we can start our vehicle and start moving it around the scene, steer around these things. We can still brake if we need to. Or we can move and then, you know, kind of roll to a stop eventually. But in both cases, we've um, now got that steering implemented. It works the way we want it to. Um, so in our next video, we'll look at actually moving in reverse to give ourselves a little bit more uh, fine grain control of moving within the scene. And then from there, we're going to talk about how we're going to get our walking character into our vehicle and start, you know, making these different controllers work with all together within one game. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.